You might be struggling with learning English and in this video I will share some tips on how to learn English faster and better. Hey everyone, my name is Ilner and I'm an educator and on my channel I usually share some development tips and some education related content. So if this is something that you care about, consider subscribing. So just to quickly introduce myself, I'm not at all a native English speaker. I live in Russia and I speak four languages. English is just one of them. As you can probably tell, my English is not at all perfect, but I don't know. My friends keep asking me how I worked on my English, so I decided to make this video. Let's do this. <laughs> So the very first thing here that I would want to recommend to those of you who wants to learn English is to be very clear about your purpose. Why would you do that? I mean, learning a language is hard, it's difficult, it's time consuming. So be very clear about this thing. Probably the best way of thinking about this purpose here is to actually think about the opportunities that you will lose if you do not learn English. Say, if you don't learn English, you will not be able to study abroad or you will not be able to grow in terms of your career or you will not be able to just simply watch movies and read books in English. So yeah, having a clear purpose is critical when it comes to learning a language because if you don't do that, you will never find enough time to learn a language. So find a great reason for yourself to learn a language. Tip number two, surround yourself with the language that you are learning now. So if you're learning English, just simply switch all the interfaces that you're interacting with during the day into English. It might be your Facebook account, your YouTube account, uh, your interface of the smartphone or of your laptop or even the games you play, everything, okay? It's very easy, you get used to it very quickly but it also helps your brain to get used to English terms. Another powerful thing here is listening to podcasts. Podcasts are really great because they are entertaining and easy to use. You don't necessarily need to understand them completely. You just play them while you're going to a supermarket or wherever you're going. And the thing is, your brain gets exposed to these new language and it subconsciously picks up some words. Yeah, you will just end up learning new words there, new phrases and new ways of communicating. As for the movies, my advice would be pick a movie that you have previously watched in your native language and then watch it in English because you already know the contents of the movie, right? So you kind of understand what is going on there. And when it's just played in English, you simply understand what is going on and it's just easy for you to get used to the English movies. Another great thing about the movies is just that they are fun to watch. And uh, this is also important because when learning a language, if you are too serious about it, it's just exhausting, right? So have fun, watch movies that you like, read books that you like, listen to podcasts that you like, and it just, you know, taps into your knowing of English. And the last tip about surrounding yourself with the language that you are now learning is actually using monolingual dictionaries. So a monolingual dictionary does not translate an English word into your native language, but instead it provides you with the meaning of the English term using English words. So why is this helpful? It helps you to go away from constantly switching from your native language to English language, but instead it helps you to actually completely switch your thinking into thinking in English. This is really helpful. Chapter three, let's speak about speaking. Unfortunately, there are no other ways of learning how to speak other than practicing. Sorry guys, I mean, yeah, this is the only way. And the question is, how do you practice if especially no one around speaks in English? Constantly challenge yourself and try to express your thoughts in English. Or what I sometimes do is, when someone is saying something, I'm like, mm, how would I put it in English? How would I say it in English? Of course, if you have some you know, speaking clubs somewhere near, you go and practice there. Just ask yourself honestly, how many hours per week do I spend speaking in English or thinking in English. 
I want to share one insight here. There was a time when I used to think that there are certain things that you can only express in your native language and you cannot do it in some other language, say in English. But the thing is, people around the world are not that different. And most probably, the people who are using English as a native language experience pretty much same things that you do and they surely have some ways of expressing their thoughts or their experience in English. You just need to find out how exactly they do that. This is when the podcasts are really powerful and helpful because when you keep listening to people communicating in English, you surely find some moments when they actually express the very same idea that you were struggling with expressing and you're like, oh wow, I thought that this can only be expressed in my native language, but yeah, they somehow do that in English too. And this mere fact that any idea can be expressed in English language as well is actually changing the whole thing. You just need to find how exactly they do that. That's it. And chapter four of this video, let's speak about pronunciation. I do believe that you do not have to care about pronunciation if you're only starting to learn a language, but later on you do have to care about pronunciation. Because pronunciation gives you the confidence, it feels nice when you can sound like native speakers. I'm still learning myself and there are lots of things that I need to improve here in terms of pronunciation, but there are certain tips that have been helpful for me. One of the important tips here is to think about your pronunciation in terms of the you know, physiology of your mouth, of your lips, of your muscles, of your tongue. How do you use them? Like, for example, when the Americans use their R sound, like, for example, a car, the tip of the tongue goes back there, like this, right? A car, car. So there are certain muscles that get involved in this process and naturally, absolutely naturally, if your muscles are not trained enough, you will not be able to produce this sound, R, because literally your tongue gets tired. To be able to sound like American R, you have to be actually training your muscles of your tongue. This is as simple as it sounds, a car, car, car. So this is what you do, okay? This is about articulation. So. Do not think about pronunciation as if it's only in your brain, okay? There is a whole bunch of, you know, muscles that are involved in this process, which also have to be trained. This is tip number one about pronunciation. There is another great tip here to improve your pronunciation is trying to rap. So basically what you do is you choose a rap composition, you download the lyrics, you play the music and you start trying to follow the rapper. And you do that, you try to articulate the words very, very quickly, and you listen to the artist's rap, and you try to understand how on earth they are doing that. I used to do that like 10 or 15 years ago, and this really does help, and you just, you just do that. Especially this is helpful when it comes to connecting the words with each other. This is really helpful. So another thing here when it comes to pronunciation is being very careful and attentive when listening to the native speakers speak. If you listen to them, you will hear certain intonation patterns. For example, the British people can speak like this, water, water, huh? I mean, going up, the intonation is going up, right? Or, for example, we are watching the cartoons in English with my daughter and there is this, you know, bumble nubs thing there. Today, the bumble nubs are going to make... See, same thing. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to identify these, you know, intonation patterns that they are using when they speak. And then you try to mimic it. You try to do the same. It does make you sound better. Yeah. So here are my other development tip videos. You can go check them out. If you have any great ideas about this video, leave your comments in the comment section down below. Obviously, if you like this video, give it a like, huge one. And if you haven't yet been subscribed to my channel, obviously do so, please subscribe. And I'll see you in my next videos. Bye.